What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 Regulation D moveset guide video. We're gonna talk about Sneasler. I'm not too big on Sneasler. I don't think it's I don't think it's that good, right? It also just Man, it it's it's weirdly humanoid, and I'm I, I'm a big humanoid Pokemon hater. I like Rillaboom, I think he's cool, but I this one's a little bit too like I feel like it, it, it just looks at me funny. I don't like it. All right, but Sneasler is um, actually probably one of the stupidest Pokemon ever, not design-wise, but game design-wise. Dire Claw is, to put it bluntly, poison jab but stupid um, because it has a 50% chance to sleep, poison, or paralyze the target. It also has poison touch, so that has a chance to activate after Dire Claw. So I don't know what your total chance to poison something is, but it's high, right? you're gonna poison something or it's gonna get paralyzed or it's just gonna be put to sleep. This is gonna be really dumb and competitive and it's gonna be very funny. So we're gonna talk about how to use it. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications and let me know what Pokemon you guys want me to cover next. Let's get into it. So Sneezler's stats are, how similar is it to Weavile actually? Weavile is less bulky um, and faster. That is, that's the comparison. But uh, Sneezler, is a poison fighting type. It's got that Toxicroak typing, and it fills a very similar niche, except it's not immune to water moves. That is the difference between these two, and also Sneasler has a better move. So um, this is gonna be the basic move set. I think that for the most part, you'll be able to get away with this on like 99% of Sneasler teams. You're gonna run the Focus Sash, Poison Touch, Fake Out, Dire Claw, Close Combat Protect. So what does this do? What it says in the box, it does exactly what it says in the box. If you need an offensive fighting type with poison and fighting coverage, which by the way is actually really good. Poison covers for fairy types and, you know, you know, steel types would want to switch into a fairy type on a fighting type move and then you just, you know, mix them up and poison jab them. Uh, so that is a really nice like type combination that wasn't um, being fully utilized on Toxicroak because it just didn't have the stats to pull it off. So this is really nice. Um, I, I think that's really cool. But yeah, um, it's going to hit things fast. It's going to outspeed a lot of things. And it is going to click two moves in total. And Fake Out is just like another one. Uh, Terra Flying, I would say, is going to be one of the better ones. It's just going to allow you to uh, schmix Ursa Luna. Uh, you could also go for Terra Ghost if you want to make sure that you don't actually get faked out. Uh, honestly, I think for Sneasler on this set, it, Terra Flying's fine. You could also go Terra Fire, technically, if you just don't want to get burned. It's, it's, it's your choice. I don't think that there's a correct choice since this isn't um, using it offensively. And Sneasler isn't exactly using it defensively either. It's just using it to dodge one hit and then next turn you die. You're delaying Sneasler's death. So yeah, um, it, it's very simple. Uh, also, we're going to cover partners for it that I've been thinking about, by the way. Uh, this is going to be an Assault Vest set. So Assault Vest, I would say, is actually kind of reasonable on Sneasler. I don't think it's the best item, but if you have it free... Um, it works, funny enough. Uh, the only thing I would say about this is that you actually do want to go with an offensive Terra, but it sort of functions as, as a defensive Terra too, because if you're using this spread, I have 144, 4, and one, oh, 164 attack. I could stop pressing the down button. Let me also zoom in. You guys always complain when I'm on Picolytics because it's not zoomed in right. Uh, if you're facing off versus a Specs Fluttermane, this set will actually be able to, without Terraing, um, eat that uh, Terastalize Specs Modest Moonblast, and then you just hit it back with Dire Claw, and it one-shots. Or, if it doesn't Terra, you can Terra, take even less, and one-shot with Dire Claw. Uh, so yeah, and obviously, you know, you could also just poison it, and then it dies in a few turns. Or, it just gets paralyzed, and then you hit it again next turn. Or, it goes to sleep, and you hit it again next turn. You see what I'm saying when I think this Pokemon's kind of stupid? Um, it's really funny, though. It's really funny. But yeah, if you do end up Terra Poisoning, you actually are fairly, you know, especially defensive at that point with the Assault Vest and that uh, HP investment. The Moonblast at that point is going to be doing um, a little under a third at times, uh, sometimes a little over a third, but that is really good. It is a 76% uh, chance to three hit KO, uh, which is very nice. That is really the only thing this is going to do. It has like a good HP and a good special defense. So yeah, uh, the speed stat, by the way, is meant to outspeed the bulkier Fluttermane sets. A lot of them are only trying to outspeed um, base 111 to outspeed mouse holds. However, if this Pokemon ends up becoming more relevant, we will see Fluttermane become more frail uh, in trying to outspeed Sneasler specifically, which would mean that... Does Fluttermane have to run Timid to outspeed Sneasler? Oh, I actually want to check that. I actually don't know that. 
Max speed is 187. The Sneasler hit 189. It has to run timid. Yeah, no, no one's gonna run timid Flutter Man. I think it's gonna be modest. So that that is a thing um, that Sneasler does is if Sneasler becomes more common, timid Flutter Man, guys. Uh, so yeah, uh, this set is gonna run Fake Out, Dire Claw, Close Combat, the three moves that are gonna be on basically every move set. And the last move I think is U-Turn. However, you could make a, a case for other moves like Rock Slide or Shadow Claw. Um, even Trailblaze if you want to get crazy with it, but yeah. Also on the Sash set, if you really don't want um, Protect, you can also drop it for Taunt. That is another thing that Sneasler does have access to. That is a very important tool in competitive. Um, because Sneasler is so fast, it's going to want to make sure that you don't um, end up in a situation where you have to use it under Trick Room. So preventing that entirely is going to be very important. Next up is Grassy Seed Sneasler. So this thing, pressure is not the best in VGC. I think Unburden is not even better than Poison Touch on this thing, but uh, Unburdened is a solid option. This one, you do go pretty fat. You go fat mode, um, and you run 132 HP, four defense, four special defense. It's not meant to live anything in particular. I'm just dumping that in there while maxing out the attack stat. You could go fatter if you want. You can just go ahead and hit like the, um, the jump at 198 and go slightly fatter. Uh, but yeah, 116 speed. What this is actually going to do is if you run this thing next to a Rillaboom, or you could even run Psychic Seed if you want. Whatever seed you're going to proc, run it with that. Um, it's going to double your speed, right, once that uh, item is activated. Meaning that if you're 155 speed, you're going to outspeed Iron Bundle at plus one, which is a very important speed tier. And then you'll be able to close combat it immediately. Um, I do have Swords Dance and Substitute on the set, but I would recommend Protect over one of those moves. But yeah, it's going to be Dire Claw, Close Combat, Swords Dance, or Substitute. I think Substitute is actually a really good option because the way that the Sneezer is going to want to play is it's going to want to Dire Claw as many things as often as possible. So like this bulkier way of playing it with that like defense boost and the Substitute up will allow you to, if you like lead off like Fake Out Rillaboom plus Sneezer, Substitute up uh, to just hit things with Dire Claws, poison them, paralyze them, put them to sleep, be a silly, goofy little guy and just ruin someone's experience in the game. I think Terra Grass also isn't a bad option defensively for this guy. It's going to make it so at plus one, you're actually eating those earthquakes pretty well. We actually go ahead and throw that in the damage calculator. We had, what, 148 um, HP EVs uh, plus one defense, Terra Grass, and Terrastalize. Let's put that versus like, um, you know what? Let's go crazy. Let's put that versus an Ursa Luna Earthquake. <laughs> Why not? So the headlong rush with the guts boost is not um, going to KO you. And I think if they end up wanting to go earthquake because of like grassy terrain and stuff, um, earthquake's going to do like minuscule damage. That is very cool. You know, you become decently bulky. I'm going to be honest, guys. These two sets were just meant to fill space. These are options that you do have that might be useful. This is going to be the set you run 99% of the time. I think you should run this set. Let's talk about Sneasler Partners. Fluttermane is actually a very solid Sneasler partner. As a matter of fact, Ghost types in general, I think are decent Sneasler partners, but only if they can afford to run Hex. Because Sneasler is going to be spamming status conditions, I think that you get away with like Dragapult, Fluttermane, or Spectre as your three main partners. Um, just to hit them with that, what, 130 base power move uh, that is also stab off of these guys. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Also, uh, Sneasler next to Fluttermane is solid because Fluttermane could run Substitute itself. And you can go for Fake Out, Substitute, and then next turn go for Dire Claw Hex. And because if you run Poison Touch, you have the, you know, the extra chance to poison, what you can actually do is make it so your Fluttermane is slower than your own Sneasler, and your Sneasler will always get to Dire Claw, and then you Hex into it, um, assuming that you get that status condition, which most of the time you're going to get it, you know? Uh, so that is, that is very nice. I think that is a, a good combo. Rillaboom is on here for obvious reasons. Uh, like I said, Sneasler does enjoy having another Fake Out partner, um, but Rillaboom in particular will be able to cover for the ground weakness by getting rid of those Pokemon with uh, very powerful wood hammers and stuff. Uh, Rillaboom also is going to be able to uh, just like pivot in and out with Sneasler. You can like U-turn into uh, like an Intimidate partner, which is going to allow Sneasler to live longer. And, you know, speaking of Intimidate partners, I actually do think Landorus is a very solid partner as well. Uh, however, I don't know which Landorus. I think Lando T is good, right? Lando I is also very solid because what Lando I is going to benefit from is fake out into like your life orb boosted attacks like life orb, um, life orb, sheer force, earth power, also sand seer storm. This is going to be a very good combo. Other Pokemon that are pretty solid. Obviously, you're going to want like those defiant Pokemon. Um, I don't think you want to double down on fighting types. 
So I would say that like your better defiant options are going to be like King Gambit because King Gambit will be able to, um, while Sneezer isn't like weak to fairy types, it doesn't want to take on Fluttermane too often uh, or without the proper positioning. So King Gambit would be able to like threaten sucker punches and stuff, which is very nice. It's also a decent assault vest user, which like I mentioned in most Sneezer sets that assault vest is going to be open. Um, and yeah, and Sneezer is also a Pokemon that they're going to want to have to intimidate. Uh, because of that high attack stat with close combat. So having King Gambit to disincentivize that is also very nice. Thunderous, as good of a prankster user as it is, you might be able to make a case for um, a Defiant set because Thunderous did get access to not only like Terra Flying, Terra Blast, but also for some reason Acrobatics. So if you want to run like Thunderous next to this thing with like a Grassy Seed too, like, you know, you could put the Grassy Seed on Thunderous this gen. Uh, and then it has a 110 base power flying move with Defiant. Wait, hold on. I just... No. All right. I just scared myself. Rillaboom and Thunderous are, all, are already really good next to each other. And I just realized that I can do this too. Sorry. I, I might, I've got my hands on my head right now because I just realized how ridiculous this Pokemon can be. But yeah, uh, Thunderous is also going to be able to go for, you know, wild charges into uh, water types uh, that, you know, there are a lot of decent bulky water types in this format, like Dondozo and stuff uh, that might be your opponent's answer to a Sneasler, like just swapping in and eating in close combat. So that is very nice. It's also a taunt user, which will allow you to prevent Trick Room next to it. And just being immune to ground moves uh, is very, very important in Sneasler games. So yeah, uh, Thunderous, Rillaboom, Fluttermane, Landorus. Those are really like the only ones I can truly think about. I might be missing something completely like obvious. I don't know. Um, someone in the comment section is going to be like, what about Infernal Parade user Hisuian Typhlosion who has better hacks? Is it better hacks? It is better hacks. Uh, but I don't know. Actually, is it? I think it might be worse hacks. That is worse hacks, but it just burns. I don't know. Uh, Sneasler is going to be a very interesting Pokemon to look out for. I'm not too hot on it. I think it's fine, though. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and uh, let me know what you guys want me to cover next. Have a nice one. Bye.